Some mics are super expensive, some are super cheap. With proper mic technique, most can sound really good. Without it, all of them can sound terrible. Let's take a look at some microphones, starting from the low end, your built-in laptop mic, or maybe your earbuds microphone, all the way up to a $2,000 professional studio mic. And let's go over a handful of ways that you can make any of these sound better. Guys, this video is one we've been looking forward to for a long time. It's got a lot of really cool, helpful stuff, but I first wanna give a thank you to the sponsor that made this whole thing possible, Blue Microphones. Blue Microphones sent out all the microphones that you're seeing in this video. They've got a huge lineup from beginner streaming microphones all the way to professional studio microphones, including the Kiwi, which you'll see at the very end, which is my personal microphone. So if you're looking for a new microphone, make sure you check them out, link in the description below. But it's important you understand that anything we talk about today will apply to any microphone. So whatever microphone you have, this is still an important video for you to watch. And if you didn't know who this guy is, he streams on Twitch as well. His name's Harris Heller. Link down below in the description. And you all know that I stream on Twitch. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Yeah, link to that one down below too. Uh, Ryan is the new hire at Senpai Records, working a lot of stream beat stuff with me. Uh, if you wanna watch him create some cool stream beats on stream, Link to his down below. Let's get back to the microphone stuff though. Let's start with a laptop mic where generally two problems tend to plague the quality experience. First one is how far you are away from the microphone. The second one is how close the fans and keyboard are to the microphone. Because of that first problem, they designed these mics to pick up sounds from very far away from them. And that ends up actually picking up a lot of room noise. Just being in a room with carpet and maybe some extra furniture can make a huge difference. If you're a streamer or YouTuber, you should use stream beats as your background music. If you're a streamer or YouTuber, you should use stream beats as your background music. As for the fan noise, there isn't a lot you can do except for maybe turning off all your apps, making sure that fan doesn't kick in. However, if you have a separate webcam with a solid microphone built into it, having that placed somewhere a little bit further away from the fans can make a pretty big difference. If you're a streamer or a YouTuber, you should use stream beats as your background music. If you're a streamer or a YouTuber, you should use stream beats as your background music. The technology in the microphones on earbuds have come quite a ways over the last decade or so. And just from the nature of where it sits, that solves both of the problems that laptop mics have. In fact, the main problem people end up having with earbud mics comes from the users themselves just naturally holding the microphone up in front of their mouth. This causes the voice to overpower that teeny tiny microphone and causes a lot of clipping. Streambeats is used by over 25,000 streamers every day and is completely safe from DMCA strikes. Streambeats is used by over 25,000 streamers every day and is completely safe from DMCA strikes. The first huge jump in quality comes from moving to a USB mic, even a super affordable one. If you're a streamer or YouTuber, you should use Streambeats as your background music. The best streamers use Streambeats. Seriously, why aren't you using Streambeats? You really should be using stream beats. But most people aren't actually using USB microphones to their full potential. One of the biggest game changers in using USB mic is the proximity effect, how close the microphone is to your mouth. Let's take a listen to the blue snowball on the desk versus in front of Ryan's face. The best streamers use stream beats. The best streamers use stream beats. A lot of people also make the mistake of speaking into the wrong side of the USB mic. Most USB condenser mics have front facing capsules not top facing capsules. Just hear the difference when we make both of these changes, both speaking into the right direction of the mic and putting the microphone on a stand closer to your mouth. The best streamers use stream beats. The best streamers use stream beats. One other improvement you can make to these mics is using plugins like EQ or compression. EQ adjusts the tone of your voice, whereas compression adjusts the volume of your voice, making it more level throughout your broadcast. The best streamers use stream beats. The best streamers use stream beats. Moving to an XLR mic can give you studio quality and a studio level of control over your audio. However, it also adds a handful of variables. For example, if you plug a super expensive mic into a super crappy interface, that's gonna make it sound like a super crappy mic. Also, once you get to this level of equipment, you start to also see some pretty serious diminishing returns, meaning you can spend a lot of money on higher end stuff and you don't hear as much of an improvement. For example, take a look at this $200 blue spark versus the $400 blue baby bottle and my personal $2,000 studio level blue Kiwi. Are you using Streambeats yet? I'm surprised you aren't using Streambeats yet. 
I'm starting to question your judgment. On your device you were listening on, you probably couldn't hear a difference between those three. And all three of them are going to be more than high enough quality for a studio broadcast or a, a Twitch stream. This is why even though I've been using my Blue Kiwi for almost 10 years now in both my live streams and in my music videos, I've never recommended it to a Twitch streamer because any Twitch streamer will get the same amount of quality out of a $200 Blue Spark. The only time that price difference really makes a difference is in a professional studio with professional singers belting into it. But XLR mics also allow you to use some really cool interfaces, like for example, the Go XLR, that have tools like EQ and compression built right into them. But in terms of improving an XLR microphone, any of the rules I've mentioned before in the USB mics really apply the exact same way to XLR mics. Is it worth talking about the fan noise in the laptop or is that just too obvious? Because <laughs> I like talk about it. It blew my mind how loud that fan was. If you're a streamer or a YouTuber, you should use stream beats as your background music. Yeah, that was that was probably the the worst thing about all of them. Yeah. But the problem I had is I really thought setting up the webcam was actually going to fix a lot more than it did. It fixed the noise. Yeah, the fan was like gone, but the camera quality the microphone quality yeah. was really poor like there was it was just nothing behind it. i don't know if another webcam would there are probably some webcams that sound better like we could try an yeah. Aver media or a brio or something but i mean they make those webcam microphones like apple's webcam microphones are like dual mic with like some noise canceling stuff oh, okay. so it takes out a lot of the room sound yeah they're pretty good but that fan just kills it. Yeah, I was surprised at uh, how good the laptop mic sounded. Like they've come a long way, mm -hmm. but the fan noise was ridiculous. Yeah, so don't run Final Cut rendering in the background when you're on your Zoom yeah. calls. That's <laughs> yeah. what we did to get the fan the fan buzzing is <laughs> a um, Final Cut running in the background. I also think a limitation to using a webcam as a mic is that you're limited to how far away it is from you. A webcam mic might sound better if it's closer to your mouth, yeah. but then obviously, then you got, it's right in it's you the, your, your forehead to your nose. Yeah, it's wor worse than Nick Merckx at that point. It's just <laughs> Another thing I found interesting was how there was a noticeable difference from each uh, USB mic to mm -hmm. the next. Like obviously there's like the massive jump from the webcam mic and the headphone mic and the laptop mic up to a USB mic, even yeah. to the $50 snowball, like night and day difference. Yeah. But there was still a noticeable difference from each uh, microphone, USB microphone to the next, from $50 to $100 to $180. Mm. It was all noticeable. Yeah. But then we got into the, the XLR mics <laughs> and like they all sounded the same. Yeah, there's the difference was so negligible that there's you, there's you basically there's no difference. Yeah, <laughs> which is weird because one was two hundred dollars, one was four hundred dollars, and one was two thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just the whole point that like unless you're in like a studio setting and you're like mm -hmm. belting vocals into it, there's mm -hmm. just it just doesn't matter. Yeah, I think it's important to think about the practical application of like these microphones and why they're made. As you get into like really uh, high production voc like high uh, vocal production. Um, every microphone sounds different on every singer. There's different frequencies that get accentuated when a, when a singer's really pushing it, and, and those mics are made to handle those in really pleasant ways and kind of textural differences that, again, don't come across when you're just talking on stream. Yeah, if you guys have any other audio questions like this, feel free to jump into either my stream where I talk about microphones a lot or Ryan's stream, because Ryan, until recently, worked as a professional recording engineer for well, eight years, but you like telling people 10 years. 10 years. 10 years, it just feels more round. <laughs> <laughs> links, you, to, links to our Twitch channels down below. Come to my channel and I'll explain for real why it's 10 years. <laughs> oh, is it really 10 years? Well, because I worked in other things outside of the studio before oh the studio. Oh gosh. For two years. <laughs> Happy streaming, guys. Happy listening. <laughs> How did I get this to not lean back? Yeah, whatever. It's fine. There's a knob on the right side, like right here. He gets it to stop leaning. Oh, oh, to stop leaning like that. I think it's the screwy thing on the bottom front. Yeah, forget. <laughs> you okay? I'm great. All right. 